Thank you all for coming. It, it sure is a pleasure to be able to meet again like this. You know, it's been three years since we sat together. Today, I want a quick uh, note to you that when you want to speak, you must come up to the microphones here and use one or the other because the meeting's being recorded and those are gonna be our official minutes. So uh, if you could do that, we'd appreciate it. So when you arrive, you'll, you'll state your names loud and clear so that the recording can, can accept it <laughs> and uh, clearly and uh, be dictive and we'll get through and help you through the hurdles that we might arise, that might arise as we go along today. If I don't speak loud enough, just raise your hand and let me know. I have a tendency sometimes to talk a little slower, not quite as fast as I used to be when I was younger. And I noticed that as I've aged, I, I listen to the Bone Builders group up there at Sterling View and their, and their chants when they're exercising, you know, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. All I think about every day is wallet, glasses, keys, and phone. I'm sure most of you can relate as you've turned around, exiting your driveway to go back in the house to get one of those. So today, the legal voters of the town of Hyde Park have been warned and are no were notified to meet here at the Lamoil Union High School in said town on March 7th in the year 2023 at nine o'clock in the morning to transact business on Articles 3 through 12, not, not involving those in this venue here right now that are being voted on by the Australian ballot. Voters were th further warned to meet here at 8.30 in the forenoon, at which time the polls will be open until seven o'clock this afternoon in early evening, at which time the polls will close. So Articles 1 and 2 by Australian ballot are scheduled for you to elect your town officers, select board, listers, Lamoille North Modified Union School District Director for a term of three years, and the Solid Waste District Management Director for a term of two years. Article 2 asks for obligation bonds in the notes for High Park in the amount uh, not to exceed $600,000 to be issued and payable over a term of not more than 10 years to fund the purchase and the equipping of a fire truck for the Town of High Park Fire Department at a total cost of $600,000. Last evening, there was a meeting that scheduled specifically for discussion of that article. Nothing unusual took place, quite frankly, as a result of that. Uh, uh, So you may do that if you haven't already. You, you may vote during the meeting if you desire or after. So we will now begin our floor voting today. And the first order of business is to elect a moderator for a term of one year. And I'll turn this over now to Brian Shackett, the chair of the select board. Good morning, folks. <clears throat> do we have any nomina nominations for monitor, town monitor? I nominate Paul Neski. Second. I'll second. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Any, any other nominees? Would, would you repeat the name louder? Paul Nesky. Thank you. Yep. Not hearing any? Any more discussion? No? Okay, uh, motion to elect uh, um, Paul Nesky for town moderator. Call for a vote. Call for a vote. I so move. Great. 
Second? Okay. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, abstaining? Welcome. <laughs> Well, that was quite a contingency I had out there, wasn't it? <laughs> I've got to rally my forces a bit better than that. You know, it used to be when I'd see an old person on the streets, and then I'd realize we all went to high school together. <laughs> Put you in your place real quick. <laughs> so in my place today, uh, is to uh, do the same as we always expect a moderator to do, and that's to keep the peace. Uh, and I think today we're going to have a good order here to do that. And the next order of our business will be to elect a cemetery commissioner for a term of five years. Do I hear a nomination for that position? Please, Judy. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Judith Lampier, and I would like to nominate Christine Cooney to be a cemetery commissioner. Uh, Christine has worked with us for several years, and she's a, a very big asset to us. Christine Cooney's name has been placed in nomination. Do I hear that seconded? Second. And it's seconded. Any other nominees? I, hearing none, I'd, I'd expect a motion that the nomination cease and the clerk cast one ballot in favor of, of the uh, nominee. So moved. And seconded. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? We now have a new cemetery commissioner for a term of five years. We now need to elect a Lampfear Memorial Library trustee for a term of five years. Do I hear a nomination? I'm Jim Noyes, and I would like to nominate Joanne Ring. Joanne has been filling a board vacancy for the last several months and has done a great job. Thank you. Do we hear that seconded? Seconded. And it's seconded. Any further nominees? Well, of course we can. Let's give her a round of applause and thanks. <laughs> now is also a good time to reflect for just a quick moment, if we could, that all, all volunteers in their positions, you know, you think about that for a minute and our thanks to them. So let's... Uh, ask that the uh, nomination cease then, hearing no other nominees, and that the clerk cast one ballot in favor of the nominee. So All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. We'll now refer ourselves to Article 4. Shall the voters vote to approve the sum of $2,500 to be raised by taxes for the support of the Lamoille Restorative Center? And we have someone that would like to speak on that and make a motion accordingly. Jeff? Good morning. I'm Jeff Beatty. I'm a, a resident of Hyde Park and a board member of Lamoille Restorative Center. Um, just would like to ask for your support of this article. Um, the Lamoille Restorative Center has been in Hyde Park and working in this county for the past 40 years. Um, I think most of you know us as the court diversion people. 
but uh, we work in several general areas. One is school engagement, which was formerly known as truancy, working uh, in the schools to help kids and their families you know, stay in school. Uh, the other area that we work closely in is the jobs programs that also help uh, at-risk youth get jobs and keep jobs. These are our upstream programs that we know um, help folks, you know, be productive members of our community and stay out of the criminal justice system. And then the third area is our criminal justice work, which is through pretrial services and things like court diversion. I would venture to guess that most of us have either a close family member or friend who has probably benefited from one of the programs uh, that we serve o over the years. Um, recently, uh, uh, former uh, state's attorney Joel Page endorsed our work, and, and he's a career prosecutor, so I think that speaks well um, for the work that we've done. So I appreciate your support of this article. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. A quick note here uh, to ourselves is that uh, the only reason that this article appears here is because this was a change in the funding of, of that, uh, of the restorative center. They, you previously in the past had voted favorably funds for them. So this was a change in the amount of funds that's being requested. Any other discussion? I'd accept a motion on that. Jeff, you're gonna make a motion? We got a motion on the floor to accept, Second. and it's seconded. Any further discussion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? You've adopted Article 4. Thank you. Article 5, shall the voters vote to approve the sum of $9,060 to be raised by taxes for the support of Lamoille Home Health and Hospice? Again, this particular article has been uh, for years. We've appropriated sums for them. There's a change here, and that's why that, the change in the manner and method of accumulating as the, the dollars to be voted on is, has changed, and therefore uh, it appears to you in this manner this year. Is there anyone here to speak for home health and hospice? We do. Good morning. My name is Virginia Brooks, otherwise known as WIFI. Um, I'm a member of the Justice of the Peace group here in Hyde Park and also a new board member of the Moyle Home Health and Hospice. I'm a resident of Hyde Park. Um, and I would ask you to consider favorably this request. Um, much of the funding for home health and hospice comes from Medicare and Medicaid, and they have reduced their payments this year by 8% at a time when inflation is at least that much or higher. I think probably everybody in this room um, knows someone or is someone who has been helped by home health and hospice. It does an incredible job of taking care of people when they're at home and to let um, members of the community who choose be able to spend their last days um, at home. I was a founding member of the hospice part of Home Health and Hospice back in 1980, and um, I'm serving on the board because I believe in paying it forward, and I know this is a service that I myself am probably going to use before I depart this world. So I ask you all to uh, generously consider this request. Thank you. If we will treat that as a motion. Do I hear a second? Any other discussion? Yes? What did we do last year? Last year was approximately $8,862. There being no further discussion, I make. Uh, I move that the secretary cast, uh, no, I'm not gonna do that, it's not a vote. We're gonna call for, oh, I'm sorry. All those in favor of the article say aye. 
No. Aye. Those opposed? Thank you. Article 6, shall the voters create a reserve fund for repairs, construction, and improvement of town community buildings, not including the library or highway buildings, to be under the control of the select board with funding from donations, fees, grants, interest earned on investments or gifts, and an appropriation of $40,000 from the unassigned general fund balance. Matt? Yeah, so just so we educate people a little bit, basically we had an issue in our town um, this year where uh, we had some flooding and we didn't have, we didn't have appropriate line item to service that. So we are asking the town to have a line item for such expense. So you're making a motion on that to approve that article? I'll make a motion. Thank you. So we have a motion on the floor to approve Article 6. Do I hear a second? Second. And a second. Any further discussion? Yes. Uh, what are community buildings? Which ones are they? Our Deanna Judkins. Guyon. She wants it, it, it's the Guyon <coughs> River Valley, which is in North High Park, our town office itself. And then there's some miscellaneous it could be signs, signs sheds. and sheds and stuff to that effect. Not the town garage. Okay, can I ask a question? You're coming down to the microphone? Oh, yep. Thank you. Hi, I just wanted to, my name is Mary Waltz. I was just curious if the way I read this, uh, that if the funding source will be $40,000 from the general fund, and then the other sources are donations, fees, grants, blah, blah, blah. So do you have an idea what the total amount of the fund becomes when you add in all these other things, or is that just sort of, if you get a donation for something, it gets lumped into that? Yeah, okay, so it's not, no, you'd, set, you'd settle for 40. Yeah, you can, I, I realize they can't hear me shaking my head. Yes, that, <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah, that's sort of standard language to put in because sometimes people say, and they want to give some money, so we need the ability to accept the money. Okay. So if anybody wants to donate money, please, we'll be glad to take it. Thank you very much. Anything else? Let's see. Yes, in the back. What benefit? I've uh, got a microphone down here. <laughs> Should be one up there for me. The benefit is we don't have the bar Yeah, I know. And your name, sir? Steve Morse. What uh, type of benefits do we get from these community buildings? Uh, uh, did I understand such as the, the Grange and North Hyde Park are in Guy buildings such as that? Guyon Valley Hall. The Guyon Valley Hall. Oh, okay. Um, what, what are the benefits that we gain from those? Well, the Guyon Valley Hall is a public building that could be used for any resource. For any resource. Is, yep. is it uh, something that's rented out or to the community events? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. True. Okay. Yep. Well, no. Thank you. Anyone else? Yeah. Seeing no hands. I'll call the question. All those in favor of Article 6 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We've adopted Article 6. Thank you. 7. <clears throat> Shall the voters vote to eliminate the office of Lister, thereby requiring the select board to contract with or employ a professional qualified assessor who need not be a resident of the town and who shall have the same powers, discharge the same duties, proceed in the discharge thereof in the same manner and be subject to the same liabilities as are prescribed for listers 
or the Board of Listers under the provisions of Title 32 of the Vermont Statutes Annotated per 17, State of Vermont, <laughs> anointed Chapter 2651C. Do I hear a motion on that? We have a motion in favor of that article. Do I hear a second? Second. And a second. Any discussion? Yes, Jack. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Is this microphone working okay? Yep. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I plan to speak against the passage of Article 7 and encourage you people, the voters of Hyde Park, to do our duty, obligation, and responsibility to vote for listers. We must not give away our right to vote here. You see people who we vote for are accountable to us. A lister is only accountable to the select board. We lose control of that. Let me give you an example. Any one of the people that are appointed to work for the town are accountable to the select board and not to the voters. So if there's something that one of those appointed people does that we don't like, but the select board does, we don't have any say. So let me give you some other reasons. About three years ago, this select board asked a similar question of the town meeting. That was for us to give up voting for the town clerk and the town treasurer. That's what we call disenfranchisement. That vote was a loud and resounding no. We need to vote again. We need to vote no for Article 7 because it's the same damn thing. Giving up our right to vote for listers and worst of all, doing away with the whole office. Vermont is known for its high value and place on our town meetings. And we're close to a pure democracy as any place in the world. Today, our job as voters in this town is to keep that way by voting no on Article 7. Giving up our right and responsibility to vote and not terminate the office of listers is giving up our freedom, also giving up part of our local democracy. We're hearing a lot about these days about losing our democracy. Right here in Hyde Park. Do you hear that sound? Chip, chip chipping away at our democracy. Today, there is a very deadly and horrific war going on in Western Europe, which is partly a fight of autocracy and democracy. Hyde Park, in its very town meeting, we are hearing chip, 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 taking away our rights, disenfranchising, the thing that's really insane is the select board is asking us to disenfranchise ourselves, to take, give, our, give our vote away. Finally, today, let a no vote for Article 7 be so loud that the select board will never, ever, ever try to disenfranchise the people of Hyde Park. We, the people, are capable of holding the select board accountable, and by voting no today is what we need to do. 
Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jack. Any further discussion? Hello, I'm Beth Carrier, and I'm not disagreeing with you, Jack. But the reality is, I, I first of all, I was um, an appraiser in Lamoille County for um, almost 30 years. And um, I really thought I'd be a lister when I retired, which I am retired. Um, but then there was a pandemic and um, different things. And I, so I really kept an eyeball on this and how it works. And no one has applied to be lister. We haven't had any people wanting the job. And it's a requirement of the state for us to have someone keeping track of all this. And over the, in the years, it's changed a little bit about who, you know, we could vote for listers, but no one's running. I mean, and after a certain number of years, I believe, please tell me if I'm correct, we have to go to the other system, right? True. So it's sort of a moot point if we don't have people to run. So I looked into it, but I don't want to sit behind a computer. If I'm going to sit on a computer as much as I did for my other job, I'm going to get that pay. So um, what I'm proposing to do, and I don't know that I'll get hired, but after long conversations, I would like to be an assistant assessor, um, which would, I would have to go before the select board and get voted in. I'm not sure they'll vote me in, but anyway, because that way we would still be in the other system, which we're going to get stuck with anyway, really. Um, and it would give people a local voice because I would have a voice. So that's really the reality of it. If no one's gonna run for Lister, um, who are we gonna vote for? And it can't go on like that for much longer. Thanks. Thank you. Brian? <clears throat> yeah, um, so our process has been like, uh, the lady just said uh, um, that we advertised, we looked for people, we went out ourselves and asked people if they were interested in, in being a lister and no response. And the state mandates that we have uh, some sort of a system in place. And uh, so we, we contracted with a company called Nemric and Nemric uh, uh, has been providing the service to us, but um, it has, I guess it's, it's met, met the needs, but we wanted something that was a little bit more um, control, we could have a little more control over it. And so we came up with a plan of working maybe with some of the other uh, towns around us. And uh, the reason for that is because we don't need a full-time uh, lister, we need a part-time lister. And same with other towns. We approached uh, Johnson and they were favorable. We also approached, uh, Wolcott and Elmore. Uh, those, uh, Wolcott and Elmore uh, decided not to go with it, but Johnson and, and Hyde Park have uh, uh, come to um, an agreement that we would hire somebody, if it's approved, to, uh, to come in and do the, the job for us and saving us uh, hopefully some money from what we're paying out to a corporation. And it's about the next best thing we can do uh, other than actually having somebody volunteer as a lister. So that's where we're at with the, with the whole thing. So uh, it's been a lot of legwork, a lot of concerns, a lot of uh, meetings and stuff like that. Uh, Ron Rajensky's put a lot of time into that to try to uh, um, formulate it so that we'd have something and meet the needs that the state is imposing on us. Plus the listers are also being mandated by the state on different things uh, that have to be done. And so not only are you volunteering to, to do the work, you're also having to go and take classes constantly to, uh, to, to do the work and, and stay on top of what the state's requiring. So that's it. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Hi, I'm Matt Reed. I'm the, the last standing lister <laughs> here in Hyde Park. Um, <laughs> Sadly, I took on the, the job as Julie was leaving and COVID happened, so that it was a little difficult. So we went quickly into the assessor process because of my uh, lack of capabilities to carry out the job because of all the requirements for the state. And uh, Ryan is right. I'm not advocating that we get rid of the 
position of listers because if we get rid of it, then we can never get it back without going through the select board process and warning at town meeting. But as it is, not getting rid of it, we still have to, by state law, do the same thing we were doing before. Appoint an assessor or hire the employee. Um, now, Beth wants to be an assistant assessor. I technically am because I was appointed. So I go to the hearings. Uh, um, anybody that has an abatement hearing and stuff like that, I listen in on those. And I also can visit sites. So if our contracted person or whatever doesn't feel safe going to deal with a hostile landowner or can't get access to a property, being a local person, I can do that. Plus, I'm technically at that point a town employee, so I can actually go to the property and represent the town and escort the assessor or whatever we need to do. So, Beth, it still works out. And that, again, we're appointed by the select board, but then we're also still part of the town, even though we're not listers voted by the town. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Diana? Hi, I'm Deanna Judkins, and as most of you know, I was a lister for ever. I don't know how many years. Um, and I think it's really important that we keep this lister position in our town. When we do our town assessment, whole wide assessment, it's so important that we sit there as locals knowing the people that are coming in to grieve their taxes. If someone is a stranger up there, they don't understand your town, they don't understand the situation, I think it's different. And I think if Beth is willing to come on board as a lister, I would step back up. We have Matt and we have another lady in the back, Leslie Rollins, so we are interested and I really hope you vote no on this article. Yeah. <laughs> Anything further? Jack. I think, I think doing away with the listers is just really uh, short-sighted. Uh, part of the thing, we already have people that are set, stepping up to be, that are interested in doing this job. And I think if we do away with the listers office, it goes away. Now, let's take a look at some of the other things that are listed in here. There's a whole bunch of people that are appointed. So, you know, next year, the select board going to come by and say, gee, you know, we don't need so-and-so anymore. So, well, maybe we don't need town meeting anymore. This is why we're here. We are the power. They have to ask us for permission to get rid of the listers and the listers office. I think it's incredibly short-sighted to go along with that. To be quite honest with you, I think the select board is just wrong-headed. Vote no. Thank you. I, I, oh, wait, wait, I have one thing I just can't. Here we go. <laughs> First, I need to understand if we're calling for a vote. I don't quite get, I, I think it's terrific that people are stepping up to the plate to fill a thing that's been a vacuum. So that's great. Does that mean they would be appointed here so we, we knew that was happening and then, then we vote not to do that? So that's my question. But the thing I, I would like to say is I personally don't see the select board as the enemy in putting this to the voters. You've tried hard to get people to stand as listed. Thank you, Mary. And people have not done it. So you're just doing your job trying to solve a problem that's before you. And I appreciate that. So thank you. Thank you, Mary. Can, can I make? I, I think the irony in this, and it's great, Jack, that you've said it, that if we hadn't put this on the warning, we wouldn't have had this conversation and we wouldn't have had people step up and volunteer. So, yay! <laughs> I move we call the question. Motion to call the question. Second. And so, uh, all those in favor of calling the question, say aye. 
Aye. Those opposed? Therefore, I'm going to call the question. I'm going to uh, not reread the article if there's no objections. And I'll just call Article 7. All those in favor of Article 7 say aye. Aye. And all those opposed? Nay. Aye. The nays carry it. Thank you. Can we, can we just... Yeah, hold up. <laughs> so, yeah, our next uh, scheduled meeting, um, those people that are interested in uh, the list of position and, and helping out, uh, please attend that meeting. And you can, always, if you're not sure, call the uh, town office and We'll get you scheduled in there for that meeting. So, and thank you very much for yeah. stepping up. We really, really do appreciate it, and uh, we do want the best for the the town. That's why each one, every one of us are here. Great. Oh. <laughs> well. Great day. You know, I, I was just looking at this little note I made. Uh, this happens to me every now and then where I, I reflect on my position. And like uh, my reflection usually follows like this. I, I came, I saw, I forgot what I was doing. I retraced my steps. I got lost on my way back. And now I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> This is a great turn of events that we've just had today. Yeah. Democracy at its best in a small community. This is wonderful. I thank everybody for participating, including all of us who voted, of course. <laughs> thank you very much. So uh, we'll proceed now with Article 9, uh, 8, eight, I'm sorry, 8. eight. Shall the voters appropriate $50,000 of the unassigned general fund balance to the Stormwater Capital Reserve Fund? Susan. Yes, sir. Um, this is, and, and I'd, uh, for all of you that have a copy of the, of the town report, if you turn to page 17, and you'll see the various reserve <coughs> funds that we have. This uh, practice of setting up reserve funds started some time ago, and, uh, <laughs> and, and way back when we were in high school. Um, when projects were done in town and you got state or federal money, you used to be able to do an in-kind match. And so that meant the time and machinery and everything that, that a town put in was counted towards your financial match. That has pretty much disappeared. And when you get state and federal funds these days, they require you to put up a cash percentage of it. Um, the some of them are, are FEMA because we do a lot of things right. We can get down to only doing a couple of percentage cash match. But most projects that come in, you need to do a 20 to 25 percent cash match for the projects. So, and, and again, on 17, you'll see we have over the years, a, a lot of years, we have set up these variety of, of uh, different reserve funds. And this one, we signed more and more projects are coming underneath stormwater and, and dealing with stormwater issues. And what we used to do is we used to take, if it was a stormwater project, we'd take it out of the highway fund. Well, the highway fund really can't afford to do that anymore. And so we have decided that we'd like to set up a separate reserve cash fund so that we have uh, projects that come under this can, can be used. Um, let's see, things... Um, we have a, it's time for us to do another flood study of the town for FEMA. That's a $100,000 project. We've got to put up $25,000 for that. We have a flood buyout project that we need to put in money for that. There are big projects coming down the road. There are um, uh, over at Ten Bends and at Ten Bends Brewery. Those culverts are due to be replaced dealing with stormwater, and we're going to have to come up with a 25% match for that. So it's, again, if you look at these funds, you see we slowly but surely build up some cash in those. So when a project comes due, 
we have the money to go forward with the project. We don't have to delay the project. More importantly, we don't have to borrow money from the bank to be able to go forward with the project. So that's why we're beginning establishing this fund with $50,000. And, and I just, in terms of, of education, would add, and I wanted you to see on page 17, with our new finance person, because as you, in the, in the bank, we, we are a very fortunate community because of this kind of budgeting for a long time. When something happens, we don't have to borrow money to pay, to pay our bills, which saves us money in the long term. But what we have done in this past year is having this amount of money, we now have a financial plan that takes it and breaks it down into various um, CDs and it's invested so that we are now actually earning money with the, with the money that we have instead of it just sitting in the savings account or, or sitting in the checking account. So we're actually, I think, I'm looking at Ron, I think this coming year we're expected to earn $10,000. Yeah, to earn $10,000 on our money, so it's putting that money to work for us, for taxpayers as well. I'm not going to argue this. <laughs> <laughs> Good. <laughs> it's not, uh, just, I'm Matt Reed again, I, and I do uh, surveying and some uh, septic engineering, and I wanted to explain a little bit about stormwater, as it might be new to some people here, may have heard about it, but we went from being able to change a culvert in the town, and say it was a 16-inch culvert that's 35 feet long, we went from being able to do that to now having to have engineering services to calculate the stormwater or the effects of the silt or the erosion, or if the culvert was big enough, and there has to do with the land above and below the culvert has changed. So if it was forest land and it's now someone's lawn, they've actually, that culvert might have to be a different size. So what we used to be able to fund under the highway department saying, oh, we just need to change these culverts as they rust through or they're damaged or whatnot. We can't just do that anymore because of the state requirement. And you haven't, maybe it hasn't affected anybody here yet, but go try to build a new project or a new house and you hit a half an acre of change in that landscape and you might spend 10 to $20,000 on stormwater engineering <coughs> now to build a house in parts of Vermont because of the new state rules. And that's what we're running into here is a bigger culvert sometimes can actually have a whole lot more engineering going into that. And then there's other projects too, like where the, we dump the snow and do whatever. But it is, uh, it's a state mandate that's really <coughs> affected all the small towns um, to have to deal with stormwater so we don't silt up the river or lake Champlain or whatever they think we're doing. So, and then everybody's projects around these culverts affect the town culverts, even though it might be not noticeable, but a hundred year flood or whatever where it becomes a big deal. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Matt. <clears throat> Any other discussion? There being none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of Article 8 as written, signify by staying aye. 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 Opposed? We've adopted Article 8. Article 9, shall the voters approve in addition to any other appropriations approved in prior articles, a total general fund expenditure amount for the period July 1, 2023 to June 30, 2024 of $3,089,000, of which $2,648,700 shall be raised by property taxes and $440,300 by non-property tax revenue. Do I hear a motion, Brian? So moved. <laughs> so moved. To f Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? There being none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor of Article 9 signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We've adopted Article 9. <coughs> Article 10. Shall the voters approve the payment of property taxes to the town treasurer in four equal installments, 32 of Vermont statutes annotated 4792, as listed below, with delinquent taxes and assessments have charged against them an 8% commission after the fourth installment per 32 Vermont statutes annotated 1674, and interest charges 
of 1% per month or a fraction thereof for the first three months, and thereafter, 1.5% per month, a fraction thereof, from the due date of such tax. Such interest shall be imposed on a fraction of a month as if it were an entire month. For Vermont Statute Annotated Number 32, Section 5136, payments are due in the hands of the treasurer by 4 p.m. on the below due dates. Only official United States Postal Service cancellation marks will be accepted if postmarked on or before the due date per 32 Vermont Statutes Annotated 4773. The first installment to be paid on or before Thursday, the 31st of August in the year 2023. Second installment before Wednesday, the 15th, November 23. Third installment before two, Thursday, February 15, 24. And the fourth installment to be paid on a, before Wednesday, the 15th of May in the year 2024. Do I hear a motion on that? We have a motion to approve that article. Second? Second. Any discussion? Hearing none, seeing no hands, all those in favor of the article just read, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? We've done it. You've appropriated the funds and approved Article 10. Thank you. Now, Article 11 to transact any other business that may legally come before the meeting. We have... I'm not sure this is legal, but it's time, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm here representing the Hyde Park Community Circle, um, and I want to thank you all for supporting us. Um, we have four events that we do during the year, and we're back to our spring event, which I'm inviting you all to, that's what I'm doing. It's Think Spring, Puppets and Plants. It's this Saturday from 10 to noon at the Hyde Park Elementary School. It's a free family friendly event. There's a puppet show. The kids get to make pl plant, plant plants. There's crafts, there's face painting, there's refreshments. So come and join us. Thanks so much. Oh, and if you want to help join Hyde Park Community Circle, um, come contact me or one of the people that you will see in the town report. We'd love to have your help. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anything else? I move we adjourn. We have a motion to adjourn. All those in favor of adjournment signify by saying aye. Aye. Those aye. opposed? Wonderful. Thank you for coming. Thanks, folks. Thank you.